senior NFL insider for ESPN, friend of the program, Michigan man, ladies and gentlemen, Adam Shefty. Hey, 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 hey. hey. Gentlemen, what's going on? Shefty, happy, happy Monday. Hey, happy championship week. Yeah, let's go. We made it. Big Hell yeah. Come on, Big Shefty. Week. We did. Good matchups. It's in-person hiring day. It's championship week. Everything's coming to a head. I assume you're getting a piece of information right there. So, Yeah, actually, I just did. Hold on a second. We oh, actually just breaking? got a text. Hold on. Let's uh, hold on. Wow. Hold on. Ready? Up, 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 up. First second. Time. Hold on. Hold on. Here we go. Little uh, little something something. Have to show and uh, there we go. Drafted tweet sent. Text him to it. There we go. And and just tweeted. The, the uh, Jacksonville Jaguars hired Ryan Nielsen as their defensive coordinator, the former Falcons defensive coordinator. Okay. Oh, congrats, Ryan. Wow. Let's go, Nielsen. Congrats, Ryan. Way to go, oh, like, the, like the Nielsen rating? How about the Jags? Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Jags making plays. Remember, Doug Pierce cleared it out. Yep. Yes, he Can't did. be doing this anymore. They ended bad. Oh, yeah. And a bad after Trevor Lawrence had that little concussion thing, seemingly vastly different than what they were going in. Still a buzzsaw capability. Got a brand new DC. Hey, way good, right? Let's go, oh. Nielsen. He did right, a so good job in Atlanta. He did a good job in Atlanta. Yeah, yeah absolutely. That Atlanta team uh, certainly fast. And he oh, looks like that. Wow. Okay. Yeah, we like this guy. <laughs> Love yeah. 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 Good yeah. DC right there. Is that Bradley Cooper? Good hire. Yeah, I'm thinking <laughs> Doug Peterson knows what he's doing. <laughs> All right. Uh, he, 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 he looks like Duval. He certainly does. Yes. Yeah. And does. Hit Jax, him, DeVille, and Ryan Nielsen are going to have plans <laughs> in oh, no yeah. time Walking to get that city arms. popping off. Uh, all right, Schefter, let's go through some news from this past weekend. We'll start with the Chiefs, obviously, because they're heading into Baltimore. All pro guard Joe Tooney undergoing an MRI today. What are the thoughts on him? And uh, what are the expectations you think as the week rolls on? Huge game. Mm -hmm. Obviously, going to need Tooney if they're going to want to do something against that Baltimore defense. Well, he's got that pec injury, and I think you hear that right away, and you say, that's not good for his availability. Now, they're doing testing today, doing an MRI. I don't know what time the MRI was, but in a best-case scenario, I think he's going to be challenged to play this weekend, and in a worst-case scenario, he's going to be out for the year. And either way, he's an incredible lineman. He has done an unbelievable job up there, and I would say the chances are that they're going to have to prepare for life without Joe Tooney, and we'll see how the tests come out with the MRI, but... Peck injury, offensive lineman, never a good combination. Yeah, need the par. Yep. Yeah. Need the par right here, obviously. Need the par. That's not good. Hey, Tony, your uh, your peck and your brain in positive vibes are on our mind. Good luck. Good yeah. luck. Hell of a year if it is, been it. If not, can't wait to see you come back. Other injury, obviously, everybody's keeping an eye on Debo Samuel. He gets injured early in that game for the San Francisco 49ers. Changes a lot of the dynamics of the offense. Obviously, the stats without Debo for this Niners team, not great. But also, Trent Williams was out at the exact same time. What are we thinking for Debo? We saw him walking, didn't we? We've yeah. seen him walking a couple times. What do we think for him? Yeah, well... He told people after the game he was okay. That was the exact phrase he used. Now, whether he's actually okay to play is an entirely different situation. And I was told this morning it's quote-unquote 50-50 whether he'll be able to go. And here's what I think is problematic about that. Even if Debo Samuel is able to go on Sunday night in the NFC Championship game, you're talking about a shoulder injury. And the way that guy plays, he plays like a running back. He plays with power, force, brute strength. Wow. The guy's incredible. Like, he's constantly just crushing people with his shoulders and whatever it is. So, to me, he's compromised if he's out there. If he's out there. Now, there's so much on the line, you have to figure he's going to try to find a way to be back out there. But he's not going to be at full strength if he is able to play. That's problematic. At least the 49ers can prepare for it all week long. When you lose him last week, as soon as they did, I thought back to some of the conversations I had with people during the course of the season – and he hurt his shoulder against the Cleveland Browns, missed the next two games. They then had their bye week before he was able to come back at Jacksonville. And they were not the same offense without him. He is okay. invaluable to what they do. He's a he's their identity to a certain extent. And they can at least budget and plan as if he might not be there, but they need him out there on Sunday night. Yeah, he's the first one off the bus, him and Trent. You know, those are mm -hmm. uh those are people that you would love to have on your team to set a tone. Feels like the Niners figured out who they were late in that game, but maybe the reason why they were trying to figure it out is because Debo wasn't available, which is a whole other piece of the puzzle that hopefully they will have back as the Detroit Lions what? travel to Santa Clara. And They're rolling, right? Huh? They, 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 they seem like, to me, the Lions do, like a team of destiny. Like Michigan wins the national championship. Mm -hmm. The Lions get to play at home in the playoffs. They win it. They go back again to play another game. It just feels like 
everything's coming up Detroit to me. That's what it feels like going to this game. And, you know, most people would say the Niners' number one seed would be the favorite. I don't know. Like, this this team to me just seems like it's rolling along and it's supposed to be here and it's going to have a legitimate chance to win on Sunday. Yep, I'm right with you, Pat. This, I agree. This is all the Lions have mm-hmm. done pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> yep. What were you guys to start? His 0-10? Uh, 0-10 and, oh and, and then year two was 1-6. and six. So it was tough and it was loud for him and golf. And then from that moment on almost, it's like, well, we know who we are, man. Yep. Mm-hmm. Trust it. We know exactly who we want. Who we And they got a team full of the same person yes. in yes. different positions. Just dogs literally – Everywhere. Yeah. Even a punter just murders footballs all the time. Everyone has a chip on their shoulder. Head coach, Jared Goff, and then Hutch, the chosen one, is leading us. So I'm it's so <laughs> perfect. Well, and then Gibbs. I mean, Gibbs was told he was a terrible draft pick. Yeah, hey, exactly. Hey, the, 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 DJ that that draft class that draft Sato. class. That draft class is incredible, right? Like you in the first couple of rounds got a difference making running back and tight end. They got difference making defensive players. They, they were a good team, and that draft right. class to me yep. elevated them and got them to the next level to where they're playing you. Yeah, but Schefter, you told me that it was a bad draft, yep. remember? Yep. Should have yep. taken Jalen Carter. That's what everyone no, said. That's what you said. You. That's what you that said, you. Schefter. I heard it come out of your mouth. Yep. You didn't have me on your show in April. There's no way I could have told you that. <laughs> nah, we were watching. We saw you. <laughs> we, saw you. Yeah, we, we saw you. No, there was, not you, but there was a lot of people that were draft experts. Mm-hmm. Hey, it's a reach. It's a reach. Why would you want this guy? It's like they're looking for a specific type of player, I think. Mm-hmm. And obviously everybody is bought in. Congrats to the brand new lines. lines. Let's stay in Michigan now. There was a clip that came out from Jim Harbaugh this weekend describing the situation at the University of Michigan. Go ahead and run it. Oh, well, first off, congrats on the Natty Championship. How does it feel, and what have you been doing ever since that? Oh, it's been incredible. Um, just back to work, you know, getting ready for uh, getting ready for the next season. There's there's a passing of the torch that's that's uh, that's awesome, and just incredible to be here today and see the testimony of of so many that are here. He was at a uh, he spoke at a conservative pro life event i believe and at one point he says football weather yeah. during his speech yeah. jim harbaugh remains jim harbaugh all the time but there with the passing of the torch is he talking about the sharon more there decision made up he is going to the nfl regardless i know he has a second in-person interview with the chargers this week where do we sit with the harbaugh situation and what did you hear from that clip there shefty what i heard is something different and knowing jim a little bit he means, uh, to me, the way I took it, and he could uh, testify this himself, but he said passing of the torch. Like I think he just means that it's a new team. Like, J.J. McCarthy's gone. Other guys mm. are gone. I mean, he, he could mean that he's going to the NFL, but why would he say that in a random interview when he doesn't even know that yet? I think we all believe that there's a legitimate chance, a good chance, he's going to wind up in the NFL. Got it. But the way that I heard that and took that, doesn't mean I'm right, is that passing the torch, new team, new guys. And yes, he could have been referring to himself. I don't think he was, but a lot of people obviously could take that any way they want. If they want to hear that he's passing the torch to Sharon Moore or whoever it is that Michigan hires, fine, you could take that way. I took it a different way, okay. but with him, you never know. All right, so I didn't even think of that way. You're right, certainly. J.J. McCarthy, new quarterback. A lot of this, Blake Corum gone. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's a lot of the guys. Mm-hmm. It would be a passing of the torch to the next generation for the team as well. I'm just so eager to hear that Jim Harbaugh's coming back to the league. Yeah, so yeah. I appreciate well, you. Well, look, I, I, I do think, look, I do think it's tracking that way. It's out of and I do think yeah. it's trending that way, right? And it seems like there's a lot of interest, not just from the Chargers, but from the Falcons. What? And so I, I think there's a realistic chance he's going to wind up in the NFL. I think that's the belief of a lot of people. But right now... He's got to go through these interviews still. He's going to meet with the Chargers at some point this week. It'll be the second time that he meets with them. Everybody seems to think that that is a match that makes a lot of sense from both sides' perspectives, which I think it does. And let's see if they can figure it out, bridge their differences. The Chargers have cast a wide net here with a lot of people. And it may just be that they settle it on Jim Harbaugh. It wouldn't be a surprise, but... They're talking to a lot of different people as well. Harbaugh be going in there, you know, because Justin Herbert, we think from what we've been told, 
kind of a quieter guy, good leader, everybody likes him. But could you imagine old Harbaugh coming back oh. to the Bolts, uh-huh. leading the team, being Nine. the being the stern? Yeah. Yep. Hey, this is how we're doing it. So Herbert doesn't have to do it. Herbert still does his thing. He and Harbaugh would be an incredible tag team, I think we all think, from outside looking in. I did not remember Harbaugh on the Chargers. Boy, he used to spin it. He oh, has yeah. ties to every team he does. that mm-hmm. currently has a coaching search going on. You're getting info right now. Well, no, it's the info I, I gave to you. I just had a moment while you were talking to tweet it. That's all. Oh, sick. Uh-huh. Hey, we appreciate that. Dude. Yeah. Uh, all right, Connor has a question for you, Schefter. Yeah, yeah, Schefter, obviously last night after the Bills lost, Buffalo and Bills Mafia in general were kind of, you know, in a little tizzy, if you will. And you just mentioned Harbaugh to the Falcons, him getting another interview. Is there any world we live in? Because a lot of Bills Mafia, you know, you could say might be a little out on Sean McDermott. Is there any world where the Bills say, you know what, because there is Belichick, Carroll, Vrabel, a few other guys, we maybe try and bring one of these guys in? Because a lot of people, including myself, believe that if Bill Belichick was the head coach of the Buffalo Bills, they'd probably win two, three, four, five, <laughs> six, seven, eight, nine, ten Super Bowls. Uh, I understand that feeling, and I think whenever any of these good teams lose, this question comes up. It came up in Dallas. It came up in Philadelphia. Oh, You're raising it here about Buffalo. And they have they have stood squarely behind Sean McDermott at times when people thought that they could be making a change. When there was the article from Ty Dunn earlier this year uh, with his comments related to 9-11 that were obviously uh, hard to describe, hard to stomach. There were people at that time that thought they could make a change that week, and they didn't. They never vacillated. They stood right behind him the entire time. So when they lose a game like this at home in a year where there are so many factors, I'm sure there are going to be people out there asking that question. A lot of them. But they had they Rex the Ryan Bills said so it this far. morning. Mm-hmm. We're working out this morning in the Hawk House. Uh, yep. And I see Rex Ryan says Bill B- Bill should hire Bill Belichick. And in my head, I was like. Oh. Oh, my God. Could you imagine? They should. Yeah. <laughs> Could yeah, you, that'd be uh, great. I mean, uh, we love McDermott over here, and obviously the hit piece that outlined some things that potentially have t- that did take place within the Bills organization with him at the helm, not great. But McDermott, I feel like, has been a steady voice up there mm-hmm. for a long time. They've had a lot of faith in him. Brandon Bean, after that hit piece, comes out and said he's our coach pretty much. A lot of support from that. But as we get into this fantasy land, uh, Bill Belichick calling the shots in places, it's like – Defense has a veteran-led defense. For sure. That's very good. Offensively, you got a quarterback that can do whatever. A receiver. You got a stud tight end all of a sudden. Mm-hmm. Running back. Running back. You got an offensive mm-hmm. line that's been it's like gritty. Bill good Belichick comes in there and starts doing his thing. That would be bananas. Patriots fans would be furious. Ooh, oh, yeah. Year. We were talking about this. Like if Bill were to go to Buffalo. <laughs> I think Tom Brady benefits the most because everyone would forgive Brady in an instant and turn that. <laughs> At least he didn't go to the. Exactly. At least he didn't go to the Jets or the Bills. You know, that, that would be. That, he did that try to get to Miami, allegedly. It, big, yeah. that, that would be madness if that were to happen. Ty has a question well, for you, Chef. Go ahead. You, go, you, no. you, you, you could do the Bill exercise, you know, here, there, anywhere with every team. We, we've been doing it, and we, we seem more enthused than the teams have so far because Uh-oh. the only team. That he's spoken to so far, to my knowledge, is the Falcons. And so, well, you know, we wondered about Dallas. We wondered about Philly. We wondered about Buffalo. You wonder about Buffalo. Like, you could do that exercise for a lot of teams because he is the greatest coach of all time. He belongs somewhere. So it's a little strange. Like, when Tom Brady was a free agent quarterback, there might have been more, but I believe there were only two teams, two of 32. Chargers, Tampa? The Chargers in Tampa. That was it. That was it. Like, why would more teams not have been interested? And I think, it's to me, it's almost repeating itself with Bill as a head coach here. Why would there not be more teams that are interested in Bill Belichick? Like, mm. here's this guy on the watched. sideline. What is it, it just, it's, it's just odd to me. I was, it was odd with Brady. Yes. It's odd with Belichick. Shefty, very odd with Brady. Because we had to show, obviously, it was only on the internet then, little small, tiny little program, regional operation at the time. But as soon as we heard Tom Brady was a free agent, said, oh, everybody wants right. Tom in the building. Because it's not just the football team that gets better. The equipment managers get better. The athletic trainers get better. The video crew gets better. The salespeople get better. Everybody gets better because they know if we don't win, it's probably my fault as opposed to Tom Brady's fault. He elevates 
Everybody's the coaches. Yep. Everybody. Look what he gets, did in Tampa. Look what he did in Tampa when he got there. Well, bingo. Right? Like, so you would think that with Bill Belichick too. Like, hey, as soon as he gets in the building, everybody's going to get better. Everybody is going to elevate their game because you know, hey, this guy should win it. We can win it. It's on me if we don't. It doesn't make any sense. Didn't make sense whenever they, they said nobody was interested in Tom Brady. Everybody's calling me just Mark. Everybody, oh, oh, you Mark. You have no idea what you're talking about. Nobody's interested. And then for the Bill Belichick thing, if no teams are interested in Bill Belichick <laughs> after everything we've done yeah. on this show, we are going to look like doofuses, Jeff D. Well, Absolute well, doofuses. Well, no, the, the, Fal the Falcons are interested, but the Falcons have this open search. Like, there's a lot of people. And maybe, maybe in the end it comes up on Bill, but maybe it doesn't. We don't know how it's going to work out. And but so far, like that's the only team that I can tell that has engaged in heavy conversation. They've met with him twice. We know that, right? What's there the might be more talking yeah. to him, but we don't know of anybody just yet. Is it his age? Is that it? Uh, Ageism. Again, I, I just I guess I would go back to the Brady argument. I didn't understand it then, okay. and I don't understand it now. Okay. I didn't. Same. I th I felt like there were more teams People that thought, should have been interested yeah. in Brady, and there should be more teams that are interested in Bill. And th and right now, there aren't. Just like there weren't with Tom. It, it's like that's crazy to me, but that's the reality. To be clear, Tom Brady won, won a Super Bowl. Yes, yep. he did, and sold the stadium out in the yeah. first year, and changed the whole business of the entire city, pretty much. Yeah. And. Uh, about three months. Added sections to the actual city because, because of Tom, Tom Brady. Brady came to town. But a lot of people thought he was done and washed in New England. And they may think the same thing with Bill. They may think, you know, maybe his time has passed. Maybe he can't come to a new organization with, you know, how different things are and build that culture again. From, like, he's not going to be there 10 years. You know, five years is not a long plan. It's kind of like a two, three-year thing, I would think, at this point, um, being 72. So, um, you watch it's it. not shocking. Needs 15 more wins. Just, you know. Why wouldn't you at least this? talk to him? Yeah, yeah, this yeah, is like the Lamar Jackson thing when everybody was like, we're not interested. No, we're not interested. Yeah, but it reminds me of that. That's yeah. exactly right. It's the same kind of thing. Yeah. All these Now, with Lamar, he had two seasons in a row where he didn't finish the season yep. due to injury, and there were people that were worried about his health, his eating, whatever it is, okay? But the fact of the matter is nobody what? out there, yeah. nobody mm. out there I didn't hear made break. a that break. compelling offer sheet. Like, nobody tried to make life uncomfortable for the, I had John Harbaugh on my podcast last week. I asked him, about, he was like laughing. He's like, well, we're very grateful that nobody else went after him because we always saw him here. And everybody says, well, the Ravens would have matched. Well, yeah, they plan to, but how about somebody who comes up with an offer sheet that makes it really hard for them to match? How about somebody that basically partners up to Lamar and says, Lamar, we want you, and we're going to pay you so much money that we're going to make it really hard for Baltimore to match, and we want you here and you don't want to be there. And Lamar was the one that did request a trade from there. So there was some bad feelings at one point in time where he might have been willing to force the issue at one point in time. That window closed when they got together a month or so later to do a deal. So, yes, limited interest in Tom Brady, next to no interest in Lamar Jackson, limited interest in Bill Bell. Like, sometimes... Teams don't always make the right calls. Yeah, that happens. I'd say. That yeah, and then Harbaugh, by the way, publicly put leverage into Lamar Jackson's camp. Mm -hmm. So I think Harbaugh always on the Lamar Jackson side, which is why I think that locker room was able to remain so tight through the business stuff that was potentially happening. Because anytime Harbaugh could get on a microphone, he's like, Lamar Jackson's my quarterback. Lamar Jackson's our quarterback. There's nobody like Lamar Jackson. What was happening business-wise behind the scenes, though, felt like it was not kind of – Radiating the same point? Is that true, or is that revisionist history that I'm having here? Well, well, I, I think I just I think back to the whole situation, and I find it to be fascinating and maddening all at once. Because again, right when Lamar was franchise tag, like there were all these reports from across the country about teams not interested, not interested, not interested, and so we could just go back and look at all the teams that were in. And all the teams that weren't in did, that passed on the chance to get Lamar. Basically, Washington, they fired their coach. Atlanta, they fired their coach. We, we go to Carolina, they fired their coach. Uh, <laughs> Las Vegas, we talked to, they fired their coach. Damn. Like, all these teams, they wound up firing their coach. So if one of these coaches would have made a play and made life difficult for Baltimore. See, I, again, I just come back to that. Everybody says Baltimore would have matched. And I say I've seen enough situations yeah. over time where a team 
Yeah, made see what Haslam life just uncomfortable, did? uncomfortable for another team. But the problem was two hundred and thirty million that, guaranteed is what Haslam yeah, just did to Atlanta and New Orleans. Exactly for Deshaun exactly. Watson. Okay, yeah. They guaranteed two thirty for Deshaun. Okay, well, he, you know, he wanted out of Houston anyway. Cleveland got it done. If you wanted it bad enough, you went to Lamar and yeah. you would say, Lamar, yeah. we're going to guarantee all two fifty. Yeah, all two fifty. And right? you got a five years. I mean, no problem at all. And you would have Lamar. Uh, Jackson. By the way, somebody just texted me. I look. One of my favorite parts of doing the show is. How many people are watching and how no. many cool people text no. thoughts no. Nobody from across the league? So one person just texted me. I'm just going to read the exact text. More interest in Deshaun Watson than Bill Belichick, Tom Brady, and Lamar Jackson. That's insane. Yeah, yeah. I'd say. Yeah, absurd. Yeah, yeah, certainly is. Hey, hey Mulligetta. Mulligetta. Well, he is, he is, is a Vrabel? dog, dude. Yeah, oh, Mike Vrabel, man. too. I mean, that's a whole other conversation. Vrabel interviewed where? Atlanta? Commanders, Chargers, or? Vrabel. Uh, he's interviewed with the Chargers and the Falcons so far. <sighs> it's crazy. All right, let's get back to the Ravens, though. And we only have that Lamar conversation because obviously we watch them mm -hmm. and how great they are and how great he is. And that offense that he and even uh, whose buddy that just got traded to the Cardinals, wide receiver? Or, oh, um, Hollywood, Hollywood Brown. Brown. Marquise Holl Brown. Hollywood. Uh, they've been comp like for two, three years. They're like, hey, can we get an offense like everybody else has? Can we get a uh, one where we use the dogs? Mm -hmm. you remember that? I think yeah, that was soldiers. actually yep. Hollywood Brown. Almost, Why do yeah. you have soldiers? You don't even use them. Yep. Mm -hmm. Use them. I think mm -hmm. it was even like uh, a little bit oh, of yeah. ad lib in there at the end. And now with the new offense with Munkin, it's like he's dealing. Mm -hmm. Absolutely dealing. Yep. The offense is incredible. And he was available potentially for anybody. Let's talk about that team, though. D-Butt's got a question for you, Shaq. Yeah, speaking of somebody being available for those Ravens, uh, Mark Andrews uh, heard that it's trending in the direction that he'll be um, up for the AFC championship. Is that true for him and Marlon Humphrey? What are, what's the injury news there with those two guys? Uh, with Andrews, last week I was told, like, wasn't going to make it back to the divisional playoff game. They thought he had a realistic chance to be back for the AFC championship game. So I, I think depending on how the week of practice goes, they're looking at the strong possibility that he'll be back. They want to see how the week goes, but I think there's a real possibility that Mark Andrews is added to the roster and can play in the AFC championship game uh, on Sunday. Marlon Humphrey, he was ruled out early in the week last week, Darius. Yep. And so I, I didn't check that on this week, but that one I would imagine is going to go down towards the wire and we'll see how that one fares. But he was ruled out, what was it, Thursday last week, mm. Thursday. So uh, he's got some he's got some progress that he has to make before he can make it back for the conference championship. We got a minute before the hard out here. Any news coming down the pipe? What should we? What do you think? Well, I, I just think you're seeing today a lot of second interviews. It's been a very slow hiring process for head coaches because teams now are getting to meet face to face. So you're seeing Dan Quinn getting called back and Raheem Morris getting called back and Jim Harbaugh getting called back. A lot of second interviews, but nobody seems to be rushing to get one of these head coaching jobs done. So it's a very, it's the slowest process that the NFL has ever had, which is exactly mm -hmm. what the league wanted. It wanted to slow it down. It wanted teams to take their time. It wanted them to interview yeah. a wide pool of candidates. That's exactly what's happened this and year. And draw up the attention and the drama. Smart. Which mm -hmm. we will follow your account for. Ladies and gentlemen, senior NFL insider for ESPN, Adam Schefter. Thank you, buddy. Hey, 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 hey. How, about, how about the passing of the torch being the team? Yeah, yeah, very interesting. As soon as I saw it, I'm like, oh, he's gone. Yeah. He just said it at the at the rally. Yeah. March. Could have been. Yeah. Both. Hour two on the other side. Be a friend, tell a friend something nice.